Hello and welcome to this new video lesson on isomerism in complex ions. Spec reference 3.2.5.3. And our lesson objectives for this lesson are, firstly, uh, to know what is a stereoisomer, what is an optical isomer, what is a geometric isomer, and lastly, cis-trans isomers and enantiomers. What are they all? And then we deal with the shapes of these complexes. The, what are the shapes that display optical isomerism? And what shapes of complexes display cis-trans isomerism? And lastly, what is cis -platin? Okay, that's what we're gonna do all in one slide. So it all starts with uh, stereoisomerism. Uh, which you may have come across before. Uh, but let's recap the uh, definition of uh, stereoisomerism. And it is uh, when you get the same molecular formula same molecular formula but different orientation of the bonds. That is stereoisomerism, and there are two uh, types of stereoisomerism. All right, the first type we're going to do here, we are going to talk about optical isomers. And optical isomers are also known as enantiomers. Okay, and uh, when do we get optical isomers? Or rather, firstly, what are optical isomers? And that is when uh, the two isomers are non-superimposable mirror images of each other. So they're non-superimposable. And they're mirror images. Rather like your left and right hands are uh, mirror images of each other that you can't superimpose on top of each other. And when do they happen? Well, they happen when you have uh, two conditions. One is that uh, you have octahedral complexes. So when the complex is an octahedral shape, uh, with six coordinate bonds, uh, but they also have to have three bidentate ligands. So when you can have three bidentate ligands and they're in an octahedral shape, then you can have optical isomers. We've got a little example here uh, where we've got uh, a nickel complex and our uh, bidentate ligand, let's, let's just um, highlight the bidentate ligand. We've got one here, one here, and one here. So we've got three bidentate ligands. Uh, in an octahedral shape, you can see uh, the, the square planar shape uh, coming into and going out of the page. With, the, with a couple of the bonds going down into the nickel ion and also up into the nickel ion in the plane of the screen there. So that is uh, a complex with a octahedral shape and uh, consisting of three bidentate ligands. And you can see, uh, for example, when you look at uh, the, these groups here, the uh, two CH2 groups, uh, they are mirror images of each other, arranged just like that, and you couldn't actually superimpose those two isomers on top of each other. So that is optical isomerism. The other type of um, isomerism is cis-trans isomerism.
cis-trans isomerism. Cis-trans isomers, right? And that's also known as, known as geometric isomerism. And this happens when we have a square planar shape. So a square planar shape um, with just the four coordinate bonds. And you need two pairs of ligands as well. Uh, so let's have a look at an example of that. We've got one here uh, with another nickel complex with... Uh, two pairs of ligands. One pair is uh, chlorine and one pair is ammonia. And so let's decide which one's the cis and which one's the trans. So the cis isomer is the one where the pairs are adjacent. So the pairs of ligands are adjacent or next to each other. So you can see that uh, these two chlorine ligands are adjacent or next to each other, as are the two ammonia ligands They're next to each other. And the trans, the trans isomer is where the pairs are opposite. And here you can see the chlorines are opposite each other, as are the ammonias they are opposite each other like that. And if they're opposite, they are trans. And if they're adjacent, they are pairs. So that is uh, cis-trans isomers or uh, geometric isomers. And actually, if you uh, replaced the cis isomer, the nickel in the cis isomer. If you replace that with platinum, uh, then you would have then you would have cis platin, uh, which is a chemotherapy drug. And so what that does is it stops the uh, tuna, tumor cells uh, reproducing. So it's um, active in the use of um, uh, lung cancer, for example. So didn't we mention that we have uh, two types of cis-trans isomers? Um, we can, all, this being the first one, where you've got a square planar shape and uh, two pairs of ligands. And the second type, second type is, uh, is octahedral. where we've got an octahedral shape and we have uh, six ligands and we have four of one and two of another. So let's give you an example of that, it makes it easier. So here we've got uh, two, well, a cis and a trans isomers uh, of nickel complex using water and uh, chloride ligands and of course now we have to do uh, decide which one's trans and which one's cis okay so we're going to use the same pattern so here trans was where the uh, pairs are opposite and so that's going to be the same case here when we look at this trans here but what is opposite um, what's opposite is the two odd ligands. All right, so in this case, this is an odd ligand and this is the odd ligand, uh, the two, two ligands, because we've got the uh, four ligands being the water molecules. All right, so when in this case, uh, the chloride ions are the ligands and they are the two versus the other four and they are uh, opposite each other. So the two odd ligands are opposite each other. That makes trans. So two 
odd ligands opposite. Let's just do a green line around those two ligands like that to show that they're opposite each other compared to the nickel iron in the middle. And as you can guess, this cis is when your uh, pairs are adjacent. So again, our, the pairs that we're concerned about are the two odd pairs. And the two odd pairs are adjacent. And so our odd pairs, are, our odd pair is uh, the chloride, uh, chloride ions, right? And here they are here. And as you can see, they're adjacent to each other. And when they're adjacent, this will be a cis isomer. Okay, so we've got two uh, types of cis trans isomers. One when the uh, shape is square planar with two pairs of ligands and the other when the shape is octahedral when you've got six ligands um, with four of one type and two of the other type. And the cis and the trans um, apply to the, uh, the two odd pairs. And that's the whole thing that you need to know about um, uh, optical isomerism in, uh, in this topic. Okay, let's uh, lastly check that we've uh, done all our learning objectives. First one, what is a stereoisomer? We defined a stereoisomer, same molecular formula, different orientation of bonds. And then we had these one, two, three, four definitions to learn. And so we're clear now that I think optical isomers and enantiomers are the same thing. And this is when you get mirror images. And then we also covered off that uh, geometric and cis-trans isomers are the same thing. And this is when you get um, the ligands either adjacent or opposite. So that's the first one done, I think. Uh, what shapes of the complexes display optical isomerism? Well, we had uh, the shape square planar. And we had, rather, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. We didn't have square planar here. We had um, octahedral. Octahedral complexes displaying uh, optical isomerism in certain circumstances when you've got three bidentate ligands. And cis trans isomerism, we had two shapes, didn't we? We had square planar. And we had octahedral. And when square planar had two pairs of ligands, and when octahedral had um, six ligands, four of one type and two of another type, then you can get cis-trans isomerism. And cis-platin, of course, was the uh, uh, complex using platinum with two ammonia uh, ligands and two um, chloride ligands, where the pairs are adjacent and that is cis -platin. Okay, so then I think we have uh, done all four of those. Thank you very much. Hope that's clear.